Hey there, welcome once again to another edition of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. I am your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today is Monday, October the 23rd. We've got a ton of stuff to go over today, so I'm going to jump right in it. So, you know, usually end of the year, you get a bunch of releases like in October, November, and then it just kind of dies up in December. So uh, we're probably going to have a busy next couple of weeks. That's okay. It's good for you, right? So anyway, our featured CD of the day is the latest release from Norwegian progressive black metal legends. Of course, I'm talking about Enslaved. Their latest is called E. You know, the last handful of releases from Enslaved have been instant album of the year candidates. And in fact, if you go back or if I go back and look, I probably picked a few of them as my uh, albums of the year in recent years. And this one is no exception. You know, again, this band kind of came about in the early mid 90s kind of uh, part of that first and second wave of Norwegian black metal alongside uh, Emperor and Mayhem and Gorgoroth, you know, all those bands. And uh, they have just kind of changed and twisted and turned and morphed all throughout the years. They always had that kind of, you know, progressive mindset, progressive element, that Viking metal element. But, you know, back with the turn of the 2000s, they started really incorporating a lot of a classic progressive rock influences into their their mix of venomous black metal. They're, they're big fans of like Pink Floyd and Genesis and whatnot. So that's been kind of like seeping into their music. Their last bunch of albums have, you know, again, awesome keyboards and clean vocals to match up and do battle with, you know, Grudel's harsh, harsh uh, growls and screams and rasps and whatnot. And it's just been a real winning formula that the critics and the fans have really loved. Uh, it, and and they, like I said, they keep reinventing themselves. Every album release sounds different than the last. This album is no different. You've got elements of, again, classic black metal here. You've got a lot of lush, atmospheric 70s prog. There's even some kind of space rock stuff going on here, like the, the second tune, I believe it is. The River's Mouth, there's like an extended passage that could have come off of a fucking Haw Hawkwind album, you know? Like classic Hawkwind now, with the bubbling synths and the repetitive rhythms, you know, and then you got the the dreamy vocals of the new keyboard player. They do have a new keyboard player who sings clean vocals as well, floating over the top, and then Grudel comes smashing in with those growls. It's just great stuff. Uh, there's also some kind of weird elements of like, um, you know, Depeche Mode or Bauhaus going on in a few spots, very fleeting, but, uh, you know, a lot of long tunes. There's uh, six regular songs on the album. If you buy the Digipack, you get two bonus tracks. All really good stuff. A lot of great guitar work. Again, fantastic keyboards from the new guy. Hammond organ and synth and electric piano. Very cool little Mellotron. Very cool stuff. I, I, you know, again, this is going to rank up very high. My guess is this will finish in the top three. I haven't figured out yet exactly whereabouts. You know, that's the fun thing about uh, these end-of-the-year polls. It's like I, throughout the course of the year, I usually say, I, it's like I always say to myself, I know what the top five are going to be probably. And then it's a matter of, of figuring out which one's going to be number one and so on. So, But we'll, we'll get there. I'm still working on it. So, uh, so get that. Enslaved E. Mandatory listening. From there, we're going to shoot over to Germany. The latest and fourth album from a German trio known as Cadaver. It's called Rough Times. Here's the guys right there. Nothing rough about it. If you've been following this band, you know they kind of do that whole 70s proto-metal thing mixed with some early doom and 70s hard rock uh, as well as bits of psychedelia. So that's that's the case here again as well. It's another very strong release. I will note like a lot of the, two, the first like couple tunes, you know, they seem like they've really kicked up the fuzz guitar tones. Uh, through the roof, which I love. Nothing wrong with that, right? A lot of groove. The bass is booming. You know, the drums are pounding. Vocals are really good. But there's also like some more, a little more moody atmospheric stuff going on here. A little bit of psychedelia. So they kind of mix it up. You know, if you if you like Cadaver, you're just doing one tune after another and that kind of proto-metal, 70s hard, bluesy, hard rock type of thing. Um, you're going to get a little more variety here than that, but plenty of that as well. So I, I really dig it. And, um, you know, they even do a pretty fun cover of Helter Skelter by the Beatles, which sounds like it could have been like Iggy Pop and the Stooges doing the cover. It's pretty, pretty cool. A lot of fun. Really good album. I think you will enjoy it if you've been following Cadaver for the last uh, three albums. Number four is pretty damn good as well. Gets my thumb of approval. So from there, we're going to shoot over to the UK. In fact, the next three albums are all from the UK. 
Go figure. I didn't plan it that way. I just happened to look here. And... The first one is a double disc concept album by a band who uh, have been pretty consistent, really consistent over the last 25 years or so. I think they've been around about that long. They've had numerous uh, vocal changes over the years, and they've got another one. So their longtime singer, who's also been in and out of the band a few times, Damien Wilson, has recently parted ways with the band once again. Of course, I'm talking about Threshold. This is called Legend of the Shires, right? Yes, indeed. And uh, that's it right there. Their new singer is an old singer, all right? Rather than go out and get someone brand new, they decide to look into their past. Mr. Glenn Morgan, who uh, appeared on one of their albums back in the late 90s, he's back in the band again. Here he is. And he sounds fantastic. Really fantastic. I don't know what he's been doing in all these years, but he's, his voice is in peak form. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's just a, it's a, I should, shouldn't say it's a typical Threshold album, but all the elements are there that we've come to expect with them. One of the reasons why I've always liked Threshold, they're, they're not your typical progressive metal band. They don't just do the dream theater thing and hit you over the head with constant blazing guitar solos and, you know, high pitch vocals and all that stuff. They've never really been all about that. Their music is a lot more moody and atmospheric, but very, very melodic. They've always had great vocal hooks. And the Shires album is no exception. It's two albums, two discs, all right? It's lengthy, a lot of material to take in, but more but the important thing is a lot of hooks, a lot of great vocals. You know, Carl Groom, Richard West, guitar and keyboards, do a fine job as always. A lot of great riffs here, some good solos and keyboard textures, but it's not a Chopzilla album by any means, which is good. It's a song-based album. It's a concept album. So I think you'll dig it. I like it a lot. Again, another thing that's going to rank pretty high up uh, on my end-of-the-year list. So, staying in the UK, we're going to go to Liverpool, the latest from Anathema, The Optimist, okay? Sort of a concept album, kind of takes a concept started on one of their earlier albums. Okay, so a little history about Anathema. They started out back in the uh, early, mid-90s as kind of like a doomy death metal band, right, with some gothic overtones. And they, just, they morphed into something completely different. They're now kind of this, they're almost hard to explain. Ultra catchy melodies, a mix of like pop and progressive rock and maybe a little alternative and ambient electronic. It's really hard to describe their sound, but you know, and I was very, very hesitant to get into the more recent music of this band for many years. I fought it tooth and nail. I was like, ah, they're just too poppy for me. But you know what? You start listening to their music, it's so infectious. The melodies and the harmonies just grab you. The hooks sink right into you. It's, it's impossible to ignore these guys. All right? Probably going to do a rant on why it's cool to be an Anathema fan if you're a metalhead. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but anyway, new albums, if you've liked their last uh, handful, I think their last four or five albums have just been stellar. Really, really good. Crit critical darlings, these guys. And that's going to be the case here as well. You know, there's a, I, I've been saying this for years. There are some hooks and melodies and songs on these albums. This one is no exception. That I just can't understand why they're not huge hits. You know, you got the Cavanaugh brothers, you know, on guitars. One also sings. You've got Lee Douglas on second vocal. She's a wonderful singer. She's better than Adele. You know, and it's like you know, I, that's why I can't imagine Adele makes so much money, sells so many CDs and downloads and all that kind of stuff, and wins all these awards. And I think there are songs on some of these Anathema albums that have the female vocals that are just as gorgeous, just obviously more in like a rock and prog sort of style. It's like, I just, I don't understand why this type of stuff is not, you know, like a million, why this is not like a million selling band. Okay. So you'll dig this one a lot. It's very, very good. Again, it's called The Optimist. A bunch of great tunes on here. A little mellow in spots, a lot of electronic stuff going on, but their last couple of albums have kind of moved in that way. But I still really dig it a lot. So. All right, this next one is probably my sleeper hit of the year. I just, just kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't expect much from it. When I heard it, I was blown away. Uh, so you know you've got, go back to the uh, early days of extreme metal, right? So you've got Slayer, Celtic Frost, Hellhammer, Possessed, and Venom. Venom, fans loved them, critics hated them, right? But you can't deny that they were one of the fathers of what later became extreme metal. Okay, you listen to old Venom's old stuff today, you know, the other album Black Metal, At War with Satan, so on and so forth. And yeah, it's not black metal, it's not even death metal, but you can see where the seeds were planted, right? And how that's, those styles kind of 
came to fruition. Well, eventually, Kronos, Abaddon, and Mantis, a lot of fighting going on there. Kronos left, all right? Again, another singer, bass player coming into the band, and Kronos came back, and then Kronos said, screw it, I'm done. And then he took the Venom name with him. He's got a new band. They've been releasing albums. Very, very good stuff, right? But recently, Mantis and uh, Abaddon decided that they want a piece of the pie, right? And they, who do they call on? Oh, I'm always forgetting his damn name. Demolition Man on bass and vocals who played with them uh, in Venom. Uh, and they've decided to put together Venom Inc. or Venom Incorporated, right? It's awesome. Awesome stuff. It, it, it's I'm telling you, if you like vintage Venom, sounds very similar. All right, there's Mr. Mantis. There's Demolition Man. We got Abaddon coming up. There he is. It's heavy. Okay, it's great riffs. Songs are memorable, but they're evil. You know, Ave Satanas. For I tell you what, you don't believe? Don't believe me? Don't take my word for it. Go to YouTube. Look up Venom Inc. Forged in Hell. Okay, it's my favorite song on the album. Tell me that doesn't just knock you on your seat. Great stuff. All right. What else we got here? Time to Die, Bloodstain, Preacher Man. Love the Preacher Man. Great. Black and black and Roll. Great, great stuff on here. Uh, you know, Venom Inc. I'm, I'm a believer. <laughs> it's really good. And, and they're on Nuclear Blast. So you know it's going to be a quality product. Sounds great. Great songs. Great playing. Heavy guitar riffs from Mantis. Love it. So, we're going to leave the UK now, and we're going to go over to South America for a band and an album that I'd never heard of these guys before. But, you know, when I saw that they uh, are buddies over at the Laser's Edge, or more importantly, Sensory Records, their progressive metal um, label, released this album by this band called Daydream XI. I was like, well, you know what? Ken Golden and company, they don't release crap. It's always quality stuff. So, I put this on, and... Uh, this is called The Circus of the Tattered and the Torn. It's a concept album, again, from South America. Mind-blowing stuff here, folks. Again, never heard of this band before. Knew nothing about them. I love when you get something. You listen to something that you, by a band you never heard before, and it just literally knocks you on your ass. That's what happened here. These guys have fantastic vocals. They're amazing musicians. But they don't like kind of crack you over the head with nonstop chops, although they do throw it in, in spots. The music is very theatrical, it's very dramatic, it's very melodic. Then every now and then they'll just throw in this ridiculous bass drum and keyboard uh, interplay exchange that just, just blows your mind, jaw on the floor type of thing. Some heavy riffs going on here, a lot of real progressive elements. Uh, it's a metal album though. Uh, but again, the concept album, it's just really, really intricate, really interesting. The weirdest cover ever, but whatever. Uh, I dig it. Really good. So be on the lookout for that. Daydream XI. If you're a progressive metal fan, you need to hear this, okay? You heard it here. All right, we're going to move over to jazz, all right? The latest from a guitar player that I had never heard before. It's two in a row for acts I never heard before. Tom Guarna, but he's a, he's a veteran of the scene. So, um... This is called The Wishing Stones. Don't mind my dog over here. You like Pat Metheny? Okay. I love him. But you ever wish Pat Metheny would get a little more aggressive, right? That's Tom. He's got that lyrical kind of tone that Pat's got, but he's got a, he's got a rock influence sitting on one shoulder, and it comes into fruition here. Uh, comes into play here. Uh, joining him is John Cowherd on keyboards, Pender and uh, Pender, Fender, Rhodes and piano. Combining them two of them there, the great John Patitucci on bass from Chick Corea's Electric Band, and Brian Blade on drums. I dig this a lot. There's the guys there. Like I said, just really good contemporary uh, jazz and jazz fusion with great guitar work, great ensemble playing. Love it a lot. Really, he's he's a really good player. And uh, if you love jazz guitar, don't miss out. I'm going to go to Germany now for a band called Cinema, The Discovering of Time. Nice little album. Guitar players formerly of Tibet, very kind of unknown and obscure prog band from like the mid-late 70s, early 80s. Uh, he started up this band, Cinema. 
mostly instrumental. It's got uh, you know some really nice keyboard textures, some really cool guitar solos. He's got like a Gilmore type of thing to him. It's not the most aggressive album in the world. There's a lot of ambient electronic type stuff here, but really nice keyboards. Overall, a good album if you like kind of the more contemporary prog. And, uh, you know, cool cover. So definitely check it out. It's worth investigating. Okay, we're going to move to a couple of uh, EPs here. First is from the legendary, legendary King Crimson. It's called Heroes. Why is it called Heroes? Well, you know why. Because they uh, have done a cover of the David Bowie, Brian Eno classic and uh, done it their way. It's very cool. But more importantly, the other tunes on here, Easy Money, live by the current band, Starless, live by the current band, the Hellhounds of Crim, and then a uh, no, radio edit of uh, Heroes. From my money, as cool as it is to hear Heroes done by the current band, the fact that they kind of play Easy Money and Starless, you know, which are classics of the uh, early King Crimson lineup of Wetton, Bruford, Fripp, and Cross. Classic period. Most people, you know, when you talk about King Crimson, that's the favorite period, right? For many, many years, Fripp and company you know, all the various incarnations of the band, would not do much, if anything, from that era of the band. So it's kind of cool to hear them dip back into it here. So, and this, of course, is the current band, which has got, like, multiple drummers and guitar players and, you know, the whole nine yards. So very, very cool if you're uh, going to see them on the tour that, that they've been on for a while, which uh, they're here in the U.S. over the next uh, couple of months, I believe. Hopefully they play some of this. Be kind of nice. I dig it. So we're going to go over to St. Louis, Missouri for... Uh, kind of indie pop psych band called Hounds. That's the little EP. Well, it's actually not an EP. It's a full full length album. Sorry about that, guys. Again, something a little weird for SOT, but uh, if you you know if you like a little bit of modern type of music in your repertoire of mostly either vintage old stuff or you know mo you know current metal and all that kind of stuff, this would be a nice little choice. They, uh, you know, they obviously their influences are a lot of the psych, psych and rock bands of the late 60s, early 70s. So you can hear some Doors influence here and there, a little bit of Jefferson Airplane. They do a cool uh, rendition of White Rabbit, which is kind of neat. But uh, just some nice, you know, jangly guitar riffs, great vocal harmonies. These guys are really good singers. And uh, just really cool arrangements. Well, I hear a little ELO at times in some of their tunes. A lot of great vocal harmonies. Catchy tunes, that's the most important thing. So if you like a little bit of like indie pop in your life, you can't go wrong with checking out this self-titled release from Hounds. All right, now, here in the Hudson Valley, New York, Orange County to be specific, Orange, Ulster, Duchess County to be specific, a brand new band called The Playback. This is their debut EP, four-song EP. There's the guys right there. I actually know this guy pretty well, Mr. Mike Prizzy on lead guitar. He works over at the Gold's Gym here in Newburgh, New York. I've gotten to know him over the last couple of years. He's been very active on the uh, Orange County music scene and various bands over the years, as has everybody else in the band. So they've gotten together, they've joined forces, created this new band called The Playback. Kind of like a bluesy hard rock band. Little influences from the 70s, certainly from the 80s and the 90s as well. Uh, Mike, some interesting guitar tones, you know, at times a little bit of Zach Wilde, a little Hendrix, a little Trower, that sort of thing, maybe a little Alice in Chains. Little sound garden, you know, really good vocalist they've got. It's got a very accessible uh, sound and style. Three of the tunes are more a little heavier, a little rocking. Again, kind of that just really strong bluesy hard rock with hooks. The other tune is more of a kind of a pop tune, tune for the ladies, you know. So I dig it. They're uh, they're going to be playing live around the area. They're also working on new material, so we can expect something else from them in the near future. So check it out if you if you live in the area, you don't. Go visit them on Facebook, see if you can get a hold of their CD. It's a lot of fun, four tunes. All right, Swiss, not Swiss, Swedish. Heavy power metal uh, veterans, Nocturnal Rights are back. AFM Records, The Phoenix. These guys have been around for a while. Got a bunch of releases under their belt, but they've been on kind of like weird hiatus for a while. Well, they're, they've regrouped. They've enlisted the help of Swedish guitar shredder Pier Nilsson. Per Nielsen, I believe you say his name, who many of you will know is also uh, very busy with Scar Symmetry and Kaipa, Progman, as well as a recent stint touring the world with Meshuggah. So he is 
He is keeping busy. He brings an interesting element to this band. He's an incredibly gifted guitar player. So he adds like kind of that, that shred guitar element, that virtuosity to the band. Uh, these guys, if you never listened to them, Nocturnal Rites, you know, I can label them a power metal band, but they have a, they got a lot of melodic rock going on there too. Insanely memorable songs, right? Great vocals, catchy hooks, but heavy riffs, occasional keyboards, and now blazing lead guitar work on top of it all. Uh, I dig this, you know, just go on YouTube, see if you can catch the whole album, you know, that you can listen to, but, you know, as hard as Black as Coal starts off the album, grab you instantly. So make sure you check it out. The Phoenix is rising. Oh. Nocturnal rights. My dog wants me to finish this show. I'm going long. Anyway, we're going to end it. The last uh, bit of the day, our last piece of business, as you know, is always forgotten favorites. So... Today, this is kind of a somber one, folks, because uh, we had an uh, untimely passing in the heavy metal community yesterday. I'm talking about the death of Martin Eric Ain, uh, former bassist and songwriter with the legendary Celtic Frost. So, you know, we talked a few minutes ago about, like, the beginnings of extreme metal. So in the early 80s, you had Venom and Slayer and Celtic Frost and Hellhammer, Possessed, those type of bands who kind of paved the way for, like, that early death metal scene, you know, death and so on and so forth. And then, of course, the black metal scene that came shortly thereafter from uh, Norway, Norway and Sweden. So, but Celtic Frost kind of paved that way. You know, their music combined thrash, because thrash was happening at the time, but also this other really aggressive and evil sound, which later we got to know as death metal and black metal. Celtic Frost had it all, right? And Martin Eric Gain was in the middle of all of it. Him and Tom, Tom Gabriel, Tom Warrior, Tom Fisher, whatever you want to call them, and Reed St. Mark on drums released a couple albums that just will never be forgotten by anybody. Very important in the history of extreme metal. Uh, and um, To Megatherian is the album that I'm talking about today. There's the guys. There's Tom. There's the late Martin in the middle. There's my buddy Reed there. You know, some classic tunes on this album. Heavy, heavy stuff. The production was stellar. And just a really a beast of an album that, uh, you know, is one that you can put on any time and it still sounds fresh today. Uh, you know, Martin, only 50 years old, passed away of a heart attack, apparently changing trains in Switzerland. He was, he's been busy, you know, he's a, he was, uh, the last time I saw Martin, I actually got to meet him in 2006 on their reunion tour. Saw him in New York City, saw them play in New York City a couple times. And, um, you know, that reunion didn't really last long. And then, as we know, you know, Tom went and formed Trypticon. That's what he's been doing ever since. So Martin has been keeping busy doing other things in life. And, uh, you know, today is it's a shock that he's no longer with us. At so young, too, 50 years old. I mean, come on, uh, younger than me. And um, he's going to be missed. He was definitely someone who, you know, his hand was, was deep into the music of Celtic Frost. Not just not always not just his bass playing skills, but he had a heavy hand in a lot of the songwriting and the idea creating, and the image be you know behind the band and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, sad day. But uh, you know if you are a Celtic Frost fan, hopefully you have been listening to some of your old uh, albums or CDs, and uh, just once again experiencing the great music of this band, who um, you know were way ahead of their time, really were. So. Martin, may you rest in peace, my friend. Uh, gone way too young at the age of 50. So, With that, I'm going to leave you for another week. This is Pete Pardo. Visit us on the web at www.catranquilly.org. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. And, of course, because you're watching, we're on the mighty YouTube, right? So uh, we'll see you next time. We'll have lots more stuff to talk about. The, the new releases are just coming out hot and heavy. So in the meantime... Check out all this new stuff. There's reviews of everything you've uh, heard about today on the internet, on our website. Go listen to your Celtic Frost. Rest in peace, Martin. We'll see you next time. Take care.